Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am excited to bring you this epic game. This is from round three of the War of the Ring tournament from 2022. And in the spirit of the tournament, I was wearing this shirt. That's my War of the Ring shirt. I enjoy it. So round three, it's been a while since I've done a video, but I ended up losing my round two games and uh, just was not excited to do a video and things were really busy with work. And um, I also lost my first round three game. So going into this game, I was one and four. So I know for sure I'm not making the top cut. And I decided to play a free people military victory strategy from the very beginning. In my first game against Dmang17, who's my opponent, we gave free people one token. And so I took the I took the muster token, the political action token, and that's how we started. You can see that I got a very nice starting roll if what you care about is going for a military victory, because I can get a turn one Aragorn. It will give my opponent turn one Saruman, but I intend to bring Gandalf. So you will see what happened. So these were my starting cards. My opponent allocated one eye, rolled one more, and only got one muster. All right, so let's jump in. This is an epic game. I will try not to dwell too long, but uh, strap in. Here we go. So uh, my opponent starts by playing Monsters Roused. Perfectly fine. And then I separate all my companions except uh, the Hobbits. And I thought about bringing the Hobbits. I don't know, but I'm just going all out military. But I kind of want to leave some threat for... Um, for the ring, you know, just in case. So that's an option. All right, I don't know why I put a three there. Okay, so I separate everyone to Moria. Great, my plan is eventually to draw Fear Fire Foes. I can separate a Hobbit over into the north, and then um, you'll see where the companions go. All right, so my opponent musters Isengard, which is good because they can sense they may be getting a ring, and I bring Gandalf to Fangorn. Now, normally I would not separate Gandalf the Grey from the Fellowship, but because I have Mirror of Galadriel, I know for sure that next, well, not for sure, but very likely next round, even if I don't roll a Will of the West, and I have a decent chance of rolling Will of the West on five dice, but even if I don't roll a Will of the West, I can get Gandalf turn two. And this is why I don't really mind giving my opponent a ring, because they'll use it to get Saruman, and then I can get Gandalf turn two. So that's my plan. Legolas goes to Lorien, Gimli heads up north, and Aragorn and Boromir head down to Minas Tirith. All right, my opponent moves some armies around in Mordor, and uh, then I use my ring to move the companions again. Gimli continues to Old Forest Road. My opponent gets armies ready in Mordor, and then I crown Aragorn. So turn one Aragorn, and my opponent uses a ring to get turn one Saruman. So, you know, fair trade. Okay, actually better for me, but still it's good for Shadow. All right, I'm happy to see uh, Riders of Theoden. Um, you know, it's these are any cards that muster up Rohan, I think I'm usually happy to see. And I'm going to try and roll a Will of the West here. Um, my opponent gets an early Day Without Dawn, but uh, Southrons and Easterlings aren't to, aren't to war yet, so it's no problem. All right, they allocate one eye and roll... One and it's interesting. I, I don't know why they allocated an eye there. They you know they could have, um, but maybe maybe not allocate an eye there. I don't know. Okay, so I get um, you know not the best roll here, but I have a palantir and I have a character die, so I can cr I can um, promote Gandalf to Gandalf the White. I'm not going to get to move the fellowship. My strategy with free people military victory is to like build up my forces, but also try and move the fellowship along slowly. So we'll see what happens. Okay. My opponent gets uh, Sauron to war. I go ahead and muster Gondor towards war because, you know, it looks like Gondor is going to be attacked. I want to be ready to um, do something with um, these forces in Gondor. I don't know. Maybe I could have done something else with this. Maybe this could have been Rohan. Um, because I do have Boromir and Minas Tirith, so I could use anything to do it. I, I think I want my opponent to be a little surprised with Gandalf the White. I don't know. Maybe it would have been better to save this. But I guess I have all these musters, and I want to start mustering Gondor because I have my companions here. So that's my thinking. Um, 
the other thing to note is I had an early scout, which makes me feel safer with um, bringing companions down here. Okay, I use here uh, Mirror of Galadriel to turn that character die into Will of the West so I can get Gandalf the White. My opponent gets uh, Southrons and Easterlings toward war. Um, I get Gandalf the White, and then my opponent attacks Osgiliath. I'm fine with this because it gets um, Gondor to war without me having to use a muster for it. Um, they get two hits, which obviously is not great. I get one, and um, then I start mustering up in Minas Tirith. They attack Minas Tirith, and... Um, you know, they have seven dice, so I'm expecting something like two hits, uh, and they don't play a card, right? So this is, this is they hit me on fives, seven thirds is the number of hits we would expect roughly. Um, so I decide, you know what, I'm going to save my scouts for later. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe I should just use my scouts now uh, to go to Las Arnach and then use my army muster to get myself to Pilar Gear, which is a more defensible location than Minas Tirith, assuming I don't want to go into a siege. Because Pilar Gear on the first round of combat, they only hit me on sixes. So also if I draw into Cirden's ships, I can play them in Pilar Gear. So okay. In any case, I decide to stay here for a field battle. Maybe it was wrong. Um I wanted to save my scouts. But I play Mighty Attack and um they get four hits here. So you know I I don't know exactly what the odds are of that, but relatively low. Um, I get three. Uh, I get. I roll three, and then I have mighty attack. So I get four hit also. Um, you know, I have higher leadership, and I have an auto hit. So I, I think my expectation is much higher than theirs. But all right. So this is bad, right? I just took a bunch of hits. Probably a bad idea. They press, and now I have to retreat to Lasarnach. And you know, I guess the benefit of I. I don't know. That that was probably just a mistake. Should have played scouts there. Okay, so they take Minas Tirith. I don't know that you need to move everybody into Minas Tirith. I might leave units in Asgiliath, but okay. So I muster into uh, Lasarnach. I'm kind of hoping they attack me here, though it makes no sense for them to attack me. So I'm not sure what I was thinking with the scouts. I should have just played scouts. Okay. Um, and my opponent brings in the Witch King, which is obviously good. And then I start mustering regular units. All right, next round. I'm happy to see through a day and a night, very flexible. And my opponent now allocates no eyes, which obviously makes sense. Rolls two, and I get some, um, you know, flexible roll. So that's good. I muster more units. They move uh, south rounds and easterlings toward Gondor. I'm passing a little bit. Now south rounds and easterlings are to war. And then I move the fellowship because I want to make some progress with the fellowship. Uh, they get they're safe which makes sense and now they're mustering um they're mustering here in umbar and i realize that probably corsairs are coming um yeah so they drew corsairs and and maybe this was my mistake for like did i need to muster once in pilar gear uh, maybe i mean i think it's good to muster in lasar knock um but yeah, I probably should have put one, a regular, in Dol Amroth. Okay, so um, I move Gandalf because there are a bunch of Nazgul there. So, you know, that's good. And then I get Gimli to Erebor so I can start using Gimli's ability if I want. And then my opponent stacks up an Umbar. And, you know, when they were here in in near Harad, if I had had two musters, I would have mustered once into Dol Amroth then, so that when they moved to Umbar, I could muster a second time. But I only have one muster, and I'm not going to spend a ring on it. So it's not that bad for me if they play Corsairs to Dol Amroth, because then it gives me some chances to go after Umbar. And maybe this will hold a little bit. All right, so I use Legolas to start getting the Elves to war in the hopes that maybe I will uh, draw Cirden ships, and generally just to rush them. Uh, so they might be tempted to make an attack without full leadership. As it turns out, the Evering Wraiths are abroad, so they can go make an attack with full leadership anyway. And they play Day Without Dawn. And I'm very happy to see this go away when I have six dice, because the odds of me rolling at some point three Wills of the West on six dice in the next, you know, five or six or seven turns are, you know, not zero. Um, I, I don't know exactly what they are, but over the next several turns, like probably get some. So I'm very happy to see this go away. Obviously, I don't want Dol Amroth to fall, but I still I, I still think I'm doing okay. So um, 
My opponent gets four hits. Obviously, that's good for them. And um, I get one. And then they press. And um, then they uh, get one more hit. So, you know, that's that's good for them. They're making good progress. And I think a good counter strategy for facing a free people military victory attempt is um, to just get going with the shadow military, too, as long as you're not leaving yourself too exposed. So I, I think I think this is actually working out pretty well. Yes, I can go after Umbar with Gandalf and Aragorn's army, but then I still need two other victory points. I'm not sure exactly where those are coming from. So and then they can pile up. Shadow can come and pile up on Umbar. So um you know, I'm not particularly tempted toward Umbar. I'll keep an eye on it, but not super tempted. Okay. Um, I get the elves towards war, hoping that at some point I'll draw Cirdan ships. And um, generally just, I need somebody else to be at war to be able to have a chance at a military victory. So elves seem like a fine option. My opponent moves everybody out of Dol Amroth to Lamadon, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. I guess they're trying to clear out Pilar gear and stop the mustering of Gondor. I still have four points, four hit points worth of Gondorian units. So, um, okay, I draw last battle, which is useful to have a daylight. And, um, okay, so they draw Fighting Uruk High, Falthing, and um, they have to allocate one eye because I moved. And then I get, you know, perfectly nice roll. And I move armies to Pelargir. Pelargir is a is quite a defensible location. And I'm happy to keep this army and Lamadon separate from the armies, you know, the shadow armies. I didn't want um the Witch King attacking in and then and then connecting up with the West Herondor army. So um this is good to split split them. All right, I moved to Old Forest Road. I don't know what else I could have done. I don't, I, I want to at some point move from Edoras to Westamnet, but I still have Riders of Theoden. So I want to have Riders of Theoden played first before I do that move. Um, and um, hopefully I'll still have time for that before they crash into Helm's Deep. If they do come crashing into Helm's Deep, um, I won't mind too much because I can get Rohan to war. So uh, I'm okay with that for right now. All right, they move into La Sarnach and they get their armies up. They're going to try and surround this army, but, you know, this is a 10 hit point army with Gandalf, so uh, they're going to have uh, a tough time. I go ahead and put an extra elite there, and now I have no elites left in Gondor. We can imagine what if I had, you know, played scouts before, but so be it. Um, and they move this army from Trollshaws to Holland. I guess they're just trying to prepare to defend Moria. Okay. Um, I move the fellowship again. They get missed. And then my opponent plays Balrog out. I don't know if they're planning on using it to mess with the fellowship or to defend Moria, but either way, that's fine. I don't know exactly what else they could be doing with that. I mean, I guess Ulug High in Lamadon could be an option, but okay. Um, I go ahead and get the elves to war. That seems like a good plan so that I can start mustering them. And then... Um, my opponent, what did they do? Muster an elite into Moria. Okay, they're defending Moria. I go ahead and play Riders of Theoden here. And then they get a nice force in Osgiliath. Where else did they move? Oh, yeah, they get one more move. And they bring their elite now in from Trollshaws into Moria. Okay, I muster into Lorien just to start to do something. And then my opponent attacks from Lamadon into Pilar gear, it's this is a little risky. I mean, you have seven hit points. I you're only hitting me on sixes. There are a bunch of things I could play here, um, and I'm going to get next action. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pilar gear from Osgiliath. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, Pilar gear from Osgiliath makes tons of sense. That's a great that's a great attack. Um, okay, so let's see what happens. They. Um, what do they do? They get no hits because they're only hitting me on sixes. Uh, I get two hits. So I think this is relatively close to expectation. Um, I would expect to get something like two. So no, three, right? I, we would expect me to get something like three with, with four leadership hitting on fives. Okay. Slightly below average. That's fine. So they take, they lose their two elites and then they press. Obviously I stay. And now they don't play a card. I could have played a card. I definitely want to save through a day and a night for tricks. Scouts are not playable. Definitely going to save heroic death for later. 
Um, daylight doesn't feel that relevant because it's only going to save two thirds of a hit. So I just risk it and they only get one hit here. And then I get, they ro they rerolled, but it doesn't matter. Um, and I get three hits. And then they press again, which is interesting. I'm not sure that I would, but you kind of need to whittle down that army. So, all right, they don't play a card. They get one more hit, which is about what we expect. And then I get three hits here. So they still have this unit, this army in Osgiliath. Um, they inflicted two hits, but they just, what did they start at? They started at nine hit points. Um, so... I just did eight hit points to them and they did two hit points to me. So that's a, that's a four to one exchange rate. You know, I don't have a lot of Gondorian units to muster. I only have two more regulars, but that's holding out pretty well. And now if they attack from Lamedon, I could go retake, um, Dol Amroth. I kind of want them to whittle down, get these armies out of Mordor, come over and get me. And then, um, maybe I'll draw Kyrdan ships by then. We'll see. Okay. So, um, guards of the Citadel, not useful. I'm going to get rid of Elven Cloaks here. I think that's pretty straightforward um, because it's going to be a long time before I get to Mordor and maybe I never will. So we'll see. Um, they roll, they roll three eyes here. So this is a, this is a very bad roll for them. They didn't get any musters. Um, and these are the sorts of things that you play for as the free people military victory, because you have a lot of turns and, some of those turns, Shadow's going to roll a bunch of eyes and no musters, right? That That's going to happen over time, um, probably. Uh, so let's see what I get. I get this ridiculous roll. This is, I cannot believe how ridiculous this roll is. Um, we calculated that my chances of getting zero attacks here are 0.1%. I have one in a thousand chance of rolling zero attacks on six dice. So, um, you know, even if I get one attack into Asgiliath, then I can throw a day and a night into Dagor Lad, or, you know, there are a bunch of options. So, you know, they got a bad roll, but I got a bad roll at the same time. Sometimes that happens. But this is like a ridiculously bad roll. Um, okay, so uh, I go ahead and play vi File. Um, you know, this is a very powerful card if I make it to Mordor. Um, I don't know that I ever will, but it's good to keep the threat alive, I think. And um, then they play Ulug High on Lamadon, and it seems like they're going to try attacking in from Lamadon. I'm a little worried about this now, um, but I still have Gandalf. It's probably going to be okay. Um, but I go ahead and muster one regular there because that's all I have left. And then... Um, where else am I going to put the other regular? I'll give it to Lorian. I'm a little nervous about going low on the elf pool. Uh, you got to be really careful with those regulars, but it was worth it here, I think, to get that regular in Pilar gear. So, and maybe this army is going to come out Dimrel Dale, Dual Golder, or I don't know, someday join up with Rohan. I, who knows where this army is going to go, but having an extra regular there that I can leave behind is probably okay. I will be very cautious about um, mustering this other elf without already losing an elven regular because otherwise my elven elites then um die to a single hit so um gotta be careful with that all right so uh they attack from lamadon into uh pilar gear and uh nope they take it back they draw a strategy card uh i draw a strategy card having uh, having freed up my hand from playing file and i draw cared ships so you know this is great. I was trying to draw into, you know, and there were a bunch of cards that'd be useful here. Uh, but obviously this is a very good time to get it because I'm very low on the Gondorian pool. The elves are at war. Like th this was part of my strategy to play to this, but obviously it's nice that I, that I drew it now. Um, okay. I also have charge guards of the Citadel. So depending on how this attack goes for my opponent, they're going to attack into Pilar gear. Obviously Gandalf is shining. They play swarm of bats. Um, you know, it was a strategy card, so it could have been, it, it could have been deadly strife. It could have been, it could have been a bunch of things. Mostly deadly strife is what I was worried about. Maybe I shouldn't have been too worried because Gandalf was shining. Um, and maybe it would have been wiser to save the daylight for later in the battle. Um, this might have been a little bit of a misplay. I was just, I was just really worried about. Yeah, maybe, maybe I was overly worried about it. But okay, uh, I play daylight here, 
and um, they get zero hits, and then I get four hits. So, you know, you expect me to get about three hits when I'm hitting on fives and I have that many, that much leadership. Um, four is obviously on the, on the top side and they, um, stop here. And so they have five units and now I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. At the start of next round, if I play Caridon ships this round, I'll have four units at the start of next round. I can attack into the witch king. And have a decent chance of getting five hits with charge because I'll have 14 dice. Uh, four from the charge. Sorry, 13. Uh, well, depends. Anyway, I have four leadership, so hopefully I'll get at least one hit on my combat roll. So, um, okay, so I go ahead and start mustering Rohan. I think at some point, maybe I'll get Path of the Woeses. Uh, also, um, at some point, maybe I'll get uh, Book of Mazarbul. Maybe I'll get Fear Fire Foes. If I get Fear Fire Foes, I can use a character die to separate a hobbit over here or just move and then separate a hobbit. So um, the reason why I'm mustering Rohan here is because I can I have a card that will effectively give me three musters for the other um, for the other nations. And uh, Rohan is very central. It can just it can threaten a lot of things. And and uh, that's why I do it. OK, so um, my opponent moves some armies around. Weather Hills to South Downs, okay. I don't know where this dude is going to go, but um, yeah, yeah, that's, I, I don't think, I don't know that I've ever seen Weather Hills to South Downs as a shadow move, but it's kind of cool. I don't know exactly where they're going. All right. And, and this is what I want to see, right? I want to see these units come out of Mordor, come over to, to help the Witch King, and um, then I can counterattack through here. All right, um, I muster Rohan again, and then they play Ring is Mine, and then I play Cairden Ships here. And I am over mustering, but I want to have a powerful army. I now have an extra regular in the Gondorian pool to muster if I need to, and I'm hoping that I'm going to kill the Witch King at the start of next round with my charge from Guards of the Citadel. Also, um, my opponent has uh, played... Whoa, sorry about that, everybody. Let me fix that. Uh, my opponent has played, I was trying to look at discarded cards. Uh, my opponent has played a swarm of bats. So they only have one more swarm of bats in their deck. And, um, you know, that would be great for charge if it works with guards of the Citadel. Okay. So let's continue. Um, I drew path of the Woeses, right? So I'm like, yeah, this is why I was getting Rohan toward war. So the, the deck is, is, uh, being nice to me. All right, my opponent uh, discards Flocks of Crabane. That makes sense. And, um, you know, obviously Shadows on the Misty Mountain is powerful. Oh, they have a second Swarm of Bats. They have their other Swarm of Bats right here. Wow. Okay. So, um, then they, they allocate zero eyes, and they roll no eyes, but I only get one movement. So... You know, maybe this was a chance to move a whole bunch, but it's not. I will get to attack into the Witch King. And um, I think, I don't know if I should use the character die or the army die here. Uh, I think I want to save the character die to be able to move, um, move once. I also noticed that my opponent does not have any um, character dice. And therefore the Witch King can't run away. Uh, if I, if I, if I miss here. So, um, either way I'm attacking in, I play my charge obviously with guards of the Citadel because that's not a useful combat effect. I mean, that's not a useful card effect. So obviously this combat effect is great, which is why I put the two elites in from the elven pool here. And they play, they play a character card here. I don't, I am surprised by that. Um, like the witch King is at risk for sure here. Um, so this could be sudden strike. This could be charge. Uh, you had swarm of bats. I don't know. I guess they want to use the Palantir to actually play swarm of bats. I mean, to play shadow is moving. I guess, I guess we'll see. All right. So I play charge here. They cycle Morgul wound, which is, you know, that's fine. Um, 
and you can play Black Breath. Obviously, it's impossible for it to do anything because Gandalf is shining, but you can cycle it out of your hand. Um, I get two hits pre, and now I have nine dice to get three hits on fives. I get one hit and then one more hit. So I did four. That's about what we expect. Five would have been slightly above average. I think four is slightly below average. It was it was really close. Um, so you know that was that was sad. Um, okay, and then they do they do one back to me, which is exactly what we would expect on three dice on fives. Okay, so I decide not to press here because my opponent only has two um, army movements. And I don't really want to chase them down in Dol Amroth. If they don't have a way of moving the Witch King, I could move Pelargir to Lamadon and then Dol Amroth and then attack into Dol Amroth and, and then reclaim Dol Amroth. And that's okay. Like, and, and maybe that's, maybe that's a good course of play. So this is, this is a great thing I'm going to ask you to comment on. Um, we're at 26. Would you press here? So that with your uh, two remaining attacks, you could attack into Dual Amroth, uh, assuming you use the character die to move the fellowship for free. Um, you have two more army movements. You could attack into uh, Dual Amroth. They would go into siege, and then you could attack again and presumably defeat the Witch King um, in the siege of Dual Amroth, unless they have a way to fly away with a character card. Um, Maybe I should have inferred that they were trying to cycle into a character card to be able to fly away. I don't know. So would you have pressed or not? I decided not to press here. Maybe that was a mistake. I want to keep the pressure on a military victory. It is nice to kill the Witch King, though. So who knows? All right. Um, all right. My opponent then decides to retreat the Witch King. Obviously, they don't have a way to fly away, so retreating is wise. And then they get this army um, from Daggerlad into North Athelion, trying to reinforce Gondor and just hold on to Gondor. Um, and then they did roll five musters. So, you know, obviously that's can be useful at this stage in the game. They muster an umbar, they muster an umbar. And at this point, I'm sort of just passing. I'm hoping there's going to be some openings. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I draw a strategy card because there's nothing that I'm really particularly excited to play. Um, I want to save through a day and a night for a little bit. I want them to overextend slightly more, and they still have a bunch of musters. So... I'm going to wait and see. Obviously, I'm eyeing these strongholds in, in uh, Mordor. Uh, and I'm also eyeing the Witch King. So, you know, we'll see. All right. Uh, my opponent musters again in Umbar. And then I move the Fellowship because I'm not going for the win right now. It's a free move. Um, there we go. And then my opponent plays Shadow is Moving. And look at these moves. So first move is Umbar to West Herondor. Obviously, that's great. Then they also move Osgiliath to West Herondor. Then they move North of the Lane to Osgiliath. And then, and then they move Dol Amroth to Anphalas. I don't know what is happening there. Um, I genuinely don't understand that move. I think they're trying to run away from... I guess they... Yeah, okay. So I guess they see that I can move to Lamadon, attack them in Dol Amroth, and then at the start of next round, finish them off. So, okay. Um, yeah. What I'm realizing here is, actually they could have left the Witch King in Dol Amroth. You didn't have to move the Nazgul with the unit and um, with the army unit. So that's too bad. I didn't I didn't think of that until just now. Um, and maybe is that an argument against pressing? Uh, or is that an argument for pressing? Because if I press, then they have to retreat to Dol Amroth. 
no, and then they could just move. They could just give up Dolamroth and move move the move the regular unit away. Or they could they could retreat to Eric, Eric. I'm guessing they could. Okay, so if I had pressed, they could have retreated to Eric, and then with their um, movement, they could have moved the regular into Dol Amroth to still defend Dol Amroth, but then the Witch King would be safe in Eric until they draw, you know, get get some character movement next round, but the Witch King would be safe. All right, so all of this is to say I shouldn't have been able to kill the Witch King, um, but neither of us realized it. I didn't realize that in the game, so this is a good reason to review the game. All right, so I guess the thinking is they see that I could come to Dol Amroth. They're running away. They know they're going to get an extra movement with this um, army, army muster, and that's their thinking. But unfortunately for them, I have through a day and a night. So this is this is like the most satisfying through a day and a night I think I've ever played. I don't know, maybe not ever, but like this is so pleasant. I get to free Lamadon, I get to free Dol Amroth, and I'm now next next to the Witch King again, and I have two more attacks. So this is not good, not good news for the Witch King. Uh, my opponent could again do this movement with the army and leave the Witch King behind, but neither of us were thinking of that. I wasn't thinking of that either, honestly. Um, and so they get, now they're they're really clearing out Mortar. So, all right. And then I move some armies. I decide to leave two elites behind because I want to be able to defend this a little bit from this army um, to make it a little bit harder to retake. And obviously this army's, this uh, Witch King is going to be able to fall. And, um, my plan is to meet back up at Rohan and then Path of the Woeses, come back to Gondor, uh, and then take out Mordor. That's that's my plan. We'll see we'll see how well, well it works. But I'm going to get to ki- kill the Witch King in Andrast. I have never, I mean, I have never killed the Witch King in Andrast before. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, my opponent, uh, I, I was thinking maybe they're doing, they're trying to do like Shadow Lengthens and they're going to try and get to, to Orthanc to hide, but... Um, I move a regular into here to um, uh, Druidwaith Ior. Uh, if somebody knows how to pronounce that, let me know. Um, Druidwaith. Druidwaith Ior. Okay. And then um, the Witch King is sad. Uh, my opponent musters into Orthanc, and then I finish off the Witch King. And um, that's incredible. I mean, the Witch King and five Nazgul were just killed in Andrast by Gandalf, Aragorn, and Boromir, and some elves <laughs> that Círdan sent, and some soldiers from Minas Tirith. <laughs> this game is amazing. Okay, so uh, my opponent plays Shadows on Misty Mountains. They're mustering up. Like, obviously, it's not good to, to lose um, the Witch King, but you still have Saruman. You're going to, you know, just try and keep making progress. All right, I draw Dead Men of Dunharrow and the Red Arrow. These are incredible cards to draw in this moment because Rohan is one away from war. And this army in West Rondor is probably going to come attack Pelargir at some point, And then I can Dead Men of Dunharrow. Incredible. All right, so those are great cards. I think uh, easily I get rid of I Will Go Alone. Um, and let's see what happens. So my opponent draws Pits of Mordor. That's obviously, Pits of Mordor is good. You can defend a bunch of Shadow Strongholds that I'm attacking. Um, but it does seem like I'm pretty far away from, from um, Mordor at this point. All right. So my opponent allocates one eye because they had to and rolls two more. And then I get this awesome roll. And look, three Wills of the West. So I'm super glad Day Without Dawn is gone. Um, I start by playing the Red Arrow. Because why? I think because I want Rohan to be at war. I need Rohan to be at war. Um, and I'm going to use these Wills of the West to do army movements and basically merge up this army in Westamnet um, or Fords of Eisen, right? That's, I'm assuming like this is Uber army, Edoras into Fords of Eisen, uh, Andrast into Fords of Eisen. Now I have an incredible army there. All right, so Red Arrow. Super great. And then my opponent attacks the Fords of Eisen right now. Because Helm's Deep, um, like Rohan is at war. So by doing this now, they may be able to take Helm's Deep. 
Um, they have a Palantir. They have Fighting uruk in hand. And it's impossible for me to play uh, Ents right now. I don't have any Ents, but either way, I can't play Ents right now. So, you know, I think that's a reasonable, I guess, plan. Um, it feels like it's going to expose Orthanc, but... All right, so I play Scouts here because I feel like having that extra regular in Helm's Deep could make a difference. I'm going to get to muster once before they attack. It seems like they're really just coming in and attacking Helm's Deep before I have a chance to defend it with um, getting these armies in, but I'm willing to go for Orthanc. That's fine. Um, it's a little weird to leave two units here. Um, you know, I can now attack into there and then defeat Saruman. And if I, you know, as long as I don't have an Ent, then Saruman is safe when he's by himself. So, okay. Anyway, I use a Will of the West here to muster into Helm's Deep because I feel like I'm going to get good value for that. And then they attack into Helm's Deep. That's their plan. And, uh, you know, I start to get these armies going. If they take too long to take Helm's Deep, then this army in Westamnet can can fight them. They play Fighting Urukai because, you know, they have six hit points. I have three. I have four. Uh, that's risky. It's hard. But Fighting Urukai does um, help a lot. And on round one, they can play Deadly Strife. So this is a good way of getting a bunch of hits. I think if they had had like one more regular um, or both regulars, you know, that this this would be very different. Um, okay, so they play Deadly Strife here. And um, I mean, I guess you're hedging a little bit because it lets you defend Orthanc um, a little better by leaving two regulars there. You can upgrade them into two elites. You can muster more. So, okay, uh, they get two hits. That's about right. I mean, maybe a little unlucky, but pretty close. Um, and then I get two hits, which is also roughly what we'd expect. Um, and then, um, they automatically press. I don't have any cards to play. Uh, you know, I have sudden strike, sudden strike, heroic death. So it's going to be great once I have a bunch of leaders in there, but I don't have leaders in there. Um, all right. So they get, uh, one hit, which is about what we would expect on only four dice. And um, I get one hit, which is also what we'd expect for me. So this battle is pretty going to expectation. They lose a regular so that they'll have an option to press. Um, and they get no hits and I get one hit and they lose the regular so that they could press here and uh, have this one regular unit try and take Helm's Deep, which is just really bold. Um, but I guess why not? It could work. Um, we both missed, though. So that's the end of Fighting Urukai. They're left with one regular and Helm's Deep. And again, that was three hit points for me, taking out five of theirs. So, all right. I I don't know exactly why I leave somebody in Westamnet. I guess I don't want this unit just walking into Edoras. Um, but I want to threaten Orthanc. And they do muster once an Orthanc. I go ahead and attack Orthanc here. I'm not too worried about them taking Helm's Deep. It's pretty low odds for them to take it. Um, I leave one regular in Fords of Eisen. Again, so this unit can't just retreat. Um, and my plan is to like muster in muster in Westamnet and then attack into Helm's Deep to take care of that. Maybe I should have attacked, you know, I could have attacked uh, with this giant army into Helm's Deep first and then attacked into Orthanc, but I didn't want to give my opponent a chance to draw more cards. And um, this is a way of getting rid of Saruman. Uh, Saruman's die. So that's why I do it. Um, I attack and uh, get a very nice start to sixes. You know, it's not that unexpected, but... You know, it's good to get two sixes. And my opponent gets two hits. That's pretty standard. And then um, I press and get two more hits, which is great. And they get one hit. So I have now taken Orthanc. I have two uh, victory points. So that is exciting. Um, and I have now taken out Saruman and I've taken out the Witch King. So this is a, this is like awesome. What, what more can you ask out of the free people's military? Um, my opponent allocates no eyes because I didn't move last round and they roll none. And then I get this roll for movement. 
So this is four free movement. I'm at three movement right now. I could go up to seven movement guaranteed. So this is definitely a moment that I'm going to ask you, what would you do here? This is uh, four movement, no eyes. I'm just making notes. Um, what do you do? So I decide to uh, take care of this unit in Helm's Deep. Maybe, maybe it's dumb. Um, I also leave three regulars here. Maybe that's the wrong number. Um, I want to be ready. My thinking is I want to be ready with Dead Men of Dunharrow when this army comes into Pilar gear. So I know that they don't have any um, Swarm of Bats left because they, they played them both. So I can bring in some companions into Pilar gear and then be safe. So... Um, that's my that's my plan. Um, I uh, don't use a will of the west. I just move an army. I am also thinking about path of the Woeses at some point, and so I want some units in Fords of Eisen and in in um, Mordor. I mean, in uh, I want units in Rohan so that I can play path of the Woeses effectively. Um, Maybe I should leave more in Orthanc. You know what? At this point in the game, what would you leave? How much would you leave in in Orthanc? Would you even do any of this? But um, this is another question. So um, if you if you do agree with me that you want um, Aragorn in um, in Rohan to set up Dead Men of Dunharrow, then how many units do you bring along? Okay, um, that's what I decide to bring. I, I bring seven hit points and I leave three and a leader in Orthanc. All right, so my opponent now attacks into Pilar gear. This is exactly what we'd expect. I don't play scouts here because their chances of rolling a six aren't that great. I have some chance of this unit in Pilar gear surviving and I want to save the scouts for um, when my companions show up. So they don't get any hits, which is nice. Um, that Gondor... Condorian unit can fight and gets one hit back and then um, they move in they leave one in West Herondor I think that makes sense um, you know just playing cautiously I guess I don't know maybe they should bring it in but all right yep they bring it in okay yeah I don't th I don't think you need to leave it in West Herondor um, and then I play Dead Men of Dunharrow I decide to bring everyone um, my thinking is uh I want to leave some companions to defend, like maybe Boromir will go to Dol Amroth, and then I'm going to leave Aragorn and Gandalf in Pilar gear or Lamadon, and then later move them when this army uh, comes to, when the Rohan army come, plays um, Path of the Woses and comes to Druidan Forest, or maybe as Giliath, they open up as Giliath, uh, then Gandalf and Aragorn can meet up with them. All right, so Dead Men of Dunharrow, and I get a six. Six hits. Incredible. So things are just, you know, really going well. I retake Pilar gear, and I muster my two Gondorian units. I mean, I'm going to have to spend a few dice to, to move them around to get them to Dole Amroth, but um, I know I'm safe because Swarm of Bats is gone. So that's okay. Um, then they start mustering an Umbar. You know, that's good. Like, this is a good mustering point. Eventually, I'm going to run out of units. Um, and I think at this point, yeah, I mean, I literally have no Gondorian units left and I played Cairden ships. So, like, there are no more units coming to Gondor. Um, there are There is Path of Woses, but okay. So, um, I use a character to attack in Helm's Deep. Maybe this should have waited. You know, maybe I should have taken the opportunity to move the Fellowship while um, there were no eyes in there. But I get a hit. I take out the unit, the army in Helm's Deep. I'm happy to have this army here so that I can um, use Path of the Woses, right? That's my plan. I think that this army is coming out of Osgiliath and going to attack into Pilar gear, and there's going to be an opening for Path of the Woses. That's my anticipation. Um, all right, they muster more in Umbar. I muster a leader in um, Dol Amroth and a regular in Helm's Deep. And then my opponent attacks into 
um, Pilar gear. So this is what I was expecting. Um, now is my moment to play uh, scouts because, oh, they play a strategy card. And I'm so happy to see them play a strategy card because I'm playing scouts. Um, so that's great. And um, I retreat to Lamadon. The full army moves in. And now I get to do my um, army move. So I leave Aragorn and Gandalf and Lamadon. They're now safe. I have a nice uh, contingent in Dol Emroth that should be able to hold pretty well. And um, then I move some units into Westamnet. Um, I don't know. It seems like there were some inefficiencies there. Maybe I could have done better. If you have thoughts on that, let me know. Um, I Okay, so I end up leaving two in Helm's Deep in case there's going to be a counterattack on it at some point. All right, and then my opponent um, plays Shadow Lengthens to merge up in uh, South Dunland. And I realize, I realize the error of my ways. So all of this was pretty good, but I did not leave enough units in Orthanc. It was, it was a mistake because now they have a ring. They're going to be able to attack Gap of, they're going to be able to move to Gap of Rohan, and then they're going to use a ring to attack into Orthanc. And, um, then this army is going to be able to take this or at least have decent chances. Like if I had some end cards, maybe I'd feel differently. Um, but yeah, so, um, they move and, uh, now Moria is a little weaker. Uh, you know, I'm eyeing that there is Balrog, so it's not great. Um, and I have to use this will of the West to be able to defend Orthanc. So my plan is they're going to attack Orthanc and then I'm going to attack from Fords of Eisen into Orthanc and try and break the siege. And it's not great. I, I want to be attacking when I have a greater advantage. Um, but that's, that's what I got to do because I don't want to lose Orthanc. Um, and they do use their ring to attack Orthanc, which at least I get them to use up their ring, which isn't horrible, but I feel like I, I certainly misplayed stuff, right? Because I moved units out of Orthanc and then I had to come back and defend Orthanc. So that was just, that was really, that was a waste. That was sad. And I moved the fellowship zero times while there was, there were zero eyes and I could have moved them four times. So, you know, maybe there's a point when you're doing military victory where maybe you can just say, great, I'm going to make incredible progress with the fellowship. And now how are you going to deal with that? Um, you know, the hunt pool, I, there have been no tiles drawn, right? And I still have two companions in. So yeah, that was, that was really sad. I didn't, I didn't see this, this uh, movement and I should have been able to see that for sure. And it's absolutely correct for Shadow to be trying to retake this. So I just, I should have left more units in there. That was, that was a mistake. I had more time. There's, there's enough mustering pool if for, for Rohan that I could have mustered up in Helm's Deep. There's no super rush here. Um, and it was nice to take Fords of Eisen to, to get Gandalf, I mean, to get Aragorn back into Rohan. But honestly, I could have left Aragorn in Rohan to begin with. He didn't have to, he didn't have to come attack um, or think I could have done that without him. So, all right. Um, okay, my opponent has Palantir of Orthanc. That's always funny. And, oh, wow. Look at that. Palantir of Orthanc. And new powers rising. The shadow shadow deck is taunting the shadow player. Um, I get Thranduil's archers, and uh, there's another way. Obviously, heroic death is quite good, and um, my opponent allocates no eyes. This time, gets one, and no musters. So, like this is this is the sort. And look at this. I get six attacks. So, again, three wills of the west. So this is exactly the moment where I'm like, great. I can try and make some good progress, but I have to save, have to save, um, or think. So, um, I attack into or think first thing and I haven't drawn any ends, but I am going to play valor because, um, that could work. My opponent plays dread and despair and, um, I get only one hit. They get one hit. So that's okay. And then I press and then they retreat. And I, I'm happy to see them retreat. Um, I fill up, um, I fill up Orthanc and yeah, that seems, that seems good. I want to defend this. Um, my opponent moves into Lamadon, and then I, 
uh, get an extra leader into Dol Amroth and a regular into Helm's Deep. And then they attack Dol Amroth. And now I can play Path of the Woses to Asgiliath. I can move to South Athelion. I can attack in Minas Morgul. And even if they have like King is Revealed or whatever, I can then take out Barad Dur or Mornon. So one possibility is don't play Path of the Woes here. Instead, muster up, get a giant army of power 10 and don't, don't rush this. But my opponent has no rings and no musters and Pits of Mordor has been played. Um, so they just don't have, they really just don't have very many muster cards. Um, yeah, Pits of Mordor is played. Ulug High has been played. Um, they still have Hill Trolls and Wargs. So at this moment, would you, as free people, play Path of the Woeses? That is a, that is a question. Do you play Path here? Um, I do. That's what I did. Because I see this, I see this attack, and I just I think it's gonna be really hard. I mean, this is not a giant army; it's a five hit point army, but it's gonna be hard for them to to defend all of these strongholds. I think, especially because they have no musters. So um, I don't even ha I can use the will I can use the army muster because Day Without Dawn is already played. Um, all right, so they have to move Nazgul here so that they can defend um, minus Morgul because if they don't do that, I can take out minus Morgul this round. Because they only had characters. Uh, given that they moved in some Nazgul, I bring Aragorn. And this gives me five uh, combat dice. And uh, that's going to be great. So they play Hill... They draw a card. And they draw into Hill Trolls. So that's nice for them. I move armies. And I get this army to Dimrald Dale just to get ready. I don't think that I'm attacking into Moria because of Balrog. But, you know... It, it's going to be a threat at some point, maybe. Um, and then they move armies into Minus Morgul. I'm not sure why they don't also move this regular, but okay, whatever. And um, I attack Minus Morgul. Then they play Hill Trolls, and um, they only have one regular. I mean, one elite in their force pool. So uh, this is a sad Hill Trolls. They get to upgrade one, um, one regular. And now... Uh, we go to next round, right? And this is this is great. I'm going to be able to attack into uh, Bear Dur or Mornon at the start of next round. Um, or I'm going to threaten both of them. Okay, so they uh, get Orcs Multiplying again and, and Dreadful Spells. They get rid of Palantir. Of course, that makes sense. And um, they allocate no eyes and they roll seven attacks. So, you know, they only get one muster. They wouldn't have had a chance to muster more than that anyway. Um... But seven attacks gives them a lot of flexibility. Obviously, I would have been happy if they, if they had had fewer attacks. Um, I, I probably would have left more units. Um, I get enough attacks. That's fine. And I don't, I don't leave any units here because they're going to have enough attacks to attack out of there. I'd rather have um, more units with me. So they think about what to do, and then um, they were gonna like move characters or something. I don't know, but then of course they muster, which is obviously correct. If you don't, if you don't do that, then I can use a ring to do an army movement and take Mornon and Baradur, and then you have to retake two strongholds, which would be really hard. Um, so, um, yeah, okay. So they muster, and then I take out Baradur. And um, I have um, I have Servant of the Secret Fire, which is pleasant. And I also have Mighty Attack. So I know that I can kill that unit. Um, looking here, they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So they could bring these elites. I was thinking they might bring these elites um, in this regular. Um, and even this regular to come attack um, Barad Dur. And I think that's probably best. And this is the problem with them having so many attacks. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and then six to make the attack. Um, and you get all of these units. Mornon, North um, Ithilien, Umbar, all of them come with 
to make the attack because you have plenty of army movements. So, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what's best there, but that, that definitely seems good to me. You have great host that could be powerful. Um, and then you have onslaught for the last round of combat to try and finish me off. So yeah. Okay. Um, but they start moving right away. So this is a six hit point army against a five hit point army right now. Um, and I have two heroic deaths and shield wall, and I'm going to guaranteed kill this orc. So this is awesome. Um, I attack Bear Dirt. I play my, um, I play my mighty attack and then the orc gets a hit. So good job, orc defending Bear Dirt. Um, and you know, I'm still at four hit points. I'm at four hit points to their, um, six and I have two heroic deaths. So like, this is, this is great. No problem. Um, they attack. I go into siege and then I draw a character card because, you know, why not? Uh, fine. And, um, and then they play dreadful spells. So this, this line, um, of attack lets them play dreadful spells instead of having these two units, instead of having these five extra hit points. I think I'd probably rather have five extra hit points than basically two thirds of a two thirds of a hit from um, dreadful spells. But okay, so they roll dreadful spells um, and they get two hits. So now uh, I'm feeling a lot more nervous. They are going to have um, six hit points and three attacks to try and take me out. So, um, that was, that was huge. The fact that the orc got a hit and the dreadful spells got a hit, uh, two hits was, was huge. And I don't know. I still think I was probably right to take that army. I mean, it could have been a bigger army with a bunch more hit points. So yeah, I don't know. I, I feel sad about that. If I had been more efficient with leaving units in Orthanc, then when I, I could have been mustering into, um, Rohan more efficiently, and then there could have been a better path of Wozes, but all right. So, um, my opponent attacks Bear Dur, uh, and they play a strategy card. So I have to play Heroic Death, um, and they play Great Host. And the fact that this Great Host works because they had done so much damage already is just ridiculous because, uh, you know, they can't, they can't use Foul Stench. They can't use Cruel's Death. They can't use They Are Terrible. The only thing they could use is Onslaught. They'll save that for the end. But the fact that this great host is going to work is just ludicrous. So they get two sixes. That doesn't really matter because I have heroic death, but it is going to, I could have lost this, this, um, regular unit, uh, this regular leader instead of having to lose Aragorn or Gandalf. Um, so those two sixes do matter. And, um, and then I get two hits. So if I had gotten, three hits, which is unlikely, but if I gotten three hits, then I, I, great host wouldn't have worked. Um, and maybe Boromir should be here instead of in Dol Amroth. I don't know. Um, it felt to me like defending Dol Amroth with Boromir was thematically right, but all right. So, um, I have to lose Aragorn and then, um, I only do two hits and, and they get to do one to me with great host. So, um, I guess I'm like, let's go ahead and start mustering the north <laughs> backup plan. If I had had more attacks, I could have I could have attacked into Moria this round. Um, I I rolled three attacks. That's close to what we expect. You expect four, um, but you know I might have I might have attacked into Moria if I had had one more attack, um, because then even if they retake this, I have a chance to take Moria. So, all right, um, they attack Baradur. They don't play a card and, you know, I have the, the one card that I can play that's useful is an, is another heroic death. So do I play it here? Do I wait? I decide to play it because my only chances of surviving this are for them to miss 
on this and then miss again. And I figure there's some chance I'm going to get a hit here. They'll only have three dice and then it'll be less likely for them to be able to take me out. So um, I play heroic death and then they get no hits and I also get no hits. So that's sad. And then um, they attack again and um, I don't want to use my last ring here, so I just muster an elf into Lorien, and um, thinking that like maybe next round I can take out uh, Moria, and um, then I didn't think they would even have a strategy card, but then it's Onslaught. I get to play Wizard Staff, Servant Secret Fire, and um, they get no hits, which is kind of what you'd expect, but you know, and then I don't get any hits, so they still get to Onslaught for three. And, um, and then they kill Gandalf. So, you know, that was sad. We had, we had like a really good attack into Mordor. I, I, I think the odds of the, everything happening there, I, I don't know exactly how low it is. It feels like quite low. Um, I had two heroic deaths, you know, um, that happens. So I think this is an important moment in the game. Like, what what can I do? Do I have any winning chances? It's hard for me to figure out what they are. Um, I'm down to four dice now. So at this point, Saruman, the Witch King, Aragorn, and Gandalf have all died. <laughs> so this is, this is incredible. Um, all right, so I lose two dice. That obviously really hurts. And um, Challenge of the King, uh, yeah, didn't work out. All right, my opponent allocates no eyes. They get one. And now, you know, four four dice is just rough. So they roll, they roll seven, six attacks again. So they've just, the turns that they, they, they sort of had a bad result, like earlier on, where they didn't roll any musters. And, and then now when, when, you know, I tried to take advantage of it, they're rolling a bunch of attacks. So obviously that's, that's good. I attack into Moria. Um, and my plan is to try and win by taking Moria. I think the odds are really low. You know, it would have been great if I had more attacks. Um, and maybe I shouldn't try this and I should just like start moving the ring now and just like, well, okay, you only have three victory points and you don't have Saruman or the Witch King. So good luck trying to get all your victory points. Um, I'll just sit here in Lorien. So I don't know, maybe that'd be better. Um, but I attack into Moria. I want to try and get a free people military victory. That was my uh, goal. And um, they move this unit to Trollshaws. The elf pool is completely empty. So definitely the elves are vulnerable. Um, and then they move this army back up to Moria. I draw a card, um, nothing useful, and um, they muster into uh, South Downs and North Downs, and then move some Nazgul around, move some units around, and I'm like, well, okay, I'm going to take a shot at it. I think the chances are really low of this, but I didn't get enough. I didn't get enough um, attacks. So, and I've used all my scouts, so. Yeah, this is a rough, this is definitely a rough situation. And I feel like I've maybe thrown away, thrown away these units, but maybe I can get lucky. So I spend my last ring, again, maybe a mistake. And um, my opponent properly remembers they have Durin's Bane, so they use Durin's Bane, but they get no hits. I would have preferred that when you were trying the Onslaught. That would have been nice <laughs> to get no hits there. Uh, okay, but they get no hits from... from um, the Balrog. And then, um, I get one on seven dice, which I did have valor. So we would expect maybe closer to two, but we get one. Um, and then they get one back and then I press and, um, I use sudden strike here. You know, it's low odds. It's only a third of a hit. Um, and I miss, uh, and then I get one more hit on seven dice, which is about what you'd expect. And they get one, and now it's like, well, what what can this army do? Like, I've weakened this army to the extent that, like, this army can just attack twice. Um, the, the North Dunland army can attack into Moria twice. So at this point, my best chances are just living in the siege, 
but um, I press again and I need to get two sixes on six dice, unlikely, but possible. And I get no sixes, so that's sad. They get no hits. I press one more time again to try and get some sixes and I get um, only one six. So, you know, that combat was, I, I would have had to get pretty lucky, I think, to take to take Moria with that, um, with that army. Um, but I don't. And then they attack into Moria. I play shield wall. They get a bunch of it. They get a bunch of hits and then, um, they attack into Timberwolf Dale and bye bye Legolas. So, you know, that was like, what, what did I do that turn? Like I had some chances of taking Moria, but in the end I ended up using my last ring, not moving the fellowship and completely depleting the defense of Lorien. So when you're going for military victory and then things go poorly, maybe you have to recalibrate. And I didn't, I probably didn't recalibrate well enough there. Um, all right. So, um, I get wisdom of all around. I'm happy to see that so that I have chances of moving, um, the North to war. Uh, the elf pool is empty, so I'm definitely worried about woodland realm. And, um, I would like to muster the, north to war and then reinforce woodland realm so we'll see um my opponent uh allocates one eye i don't know exactly why they didn't i don't think they had to they didn't have to but they allocated one um and then gets this roll and then i get a bunch of movement so i can't actually i can't actually get any units um extra units in dale which is a shame but all right, so my opponent attacks Lorien. They're going to take it out and um, relentless assault. And uh, because I played advantageous position, they don't do any hits to themselves. I I probably would have rathered them to. I don't know. Um, but they end up taking it out with uh, four units remaining in Lorien. And then I start moving the Fellowship. They get missed on the first try. They get missed on the second try. And then my opponent musters some Nazgul. And then I move a third time because, you know, try and win by destroying the ring. Uh, first on tile drawn on turn 12, my opponent says. That's kind of fun. Uh, and we get a one. So that's pleasant. Where would you put the Hobbit? I decide to put them in Woodland Realm. Um, I think Woodland Realm is going to get attacked. Maybe Dale would have been better. I don't know. Um, my opponent thinks about moving towards um, Woodland Realm, but instead uh, musters an elite into Dol Guldur. And now I'm able to get the North to war before the armies arrive, which is nice. I draw Fear Fire Foes now, a little late. Um, and my opponent uh, has to allocate an eye. They roll two more and I get one movement, but two musters. So I start mustering up in Dale. I did not get any army movement. So if I had gotten an army movement, I would have mustered once and then I would have used an army movement to bring these units from Dale into Woodland Realm. But, um, you know, all right. I don't need Wisdom of Elrond anymore, so I play Confusion, but they take Old Forest Road, of course, and then I muster more in Dale because, you know, uh, I can't really defend Woodland Realm. Maybe I'll draw into Help Unlooked For. That would be cool. Maybe I'm threatening Help Unlooked For. Um, all right. So, you know, Woodland Realm gets attacked and um, I move the Fellowship. Let's keep going. I don't have any rings. What what else can you use character dice for? If I had help on the four, I would have played it right then, but I don't. All right. And then my opponent's shadow gathers two armies there. And now they're not going to be able to attack unless they use a ring, which I wouldn't really mind if they use their last ring. Um, and I'm happy to be able to keep mustering in Dale. Um, I play Smeagol helps nice master. They attack again. Great host is really nice. I play shield wall, but that's not going to do it against, um, great host. And they take out, um, woodland realm with five regulars remaining. So they're now up to six victory points. Um, all right, but I'm at seven movement with a fellowship and it's not really obvious where they're going to get their additional victory points from. Maybe eventually they can like, come and take Edoras, I guess, or, or the Shire or Dale. I, I don't know. It's not, it's not really clear to me. They're going to have to take Dole Amroth, I guess, but that is a buff Dole Amroth. Um, 
So, and I just drew into power too great, which I think will be tricky if it could be a nice way of um, defending Rivendell if I need to, because, and I'm also definitely thinking about getting this uh, elite unit from North Downs into Rivendell, but I just, I only have four dice. So it's just, it's really hard to do anything with only four dice. Um, my opponent rolls one eye. I mean, allocates one eye, rolls another, and then I get this um, nice flexible roll, but not enough movement really to get to Mordor yet. I muster more into Dale, and maybe this was a mistake. Maybe I should just pass um, to see where they're going to go because they could just like walk into Edoras. Um, my thinking is I'm going to play power too great. I'm going to um, move once and hope that they don't have an army card. I mean, they do have an army card, but I'm going to hope that they don't. That's sort of my plan. Um, I don't have enough movement to get this elite into um, Rivendell, the elite from North Downs into Rivendell. Anyway, I haven't, so it's a little tricky. I don't, I don't know exactly what to do. All right. In any case, I muster one in Dale and one in Helm's Deep, and my opponent uh, starts recruiting in North Rune. And Mount Gundabad. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I guess Mount Gundabad, you're going to come to uh, Rivendell. Do they not have elites? Yes, they, they have. They have Sauron elites now. So yeah, I don't know why we don't just put elites there. But okay. Um, they do that again. A regular Mount Gundabad, regular North Rune. And then I move once and get hit. It's a two. I take one corruption. Gollum has appeared. And then, um, and then Mary shows up in... Dale. So that's cool. And then my opponent leaves a regular in Mount Gundabad and um, moves to Vale of Karnan. So I'm not really sure what's happening here. I, maybe they're trying to go for Erebor. Maybe they're going to take Dale. I, I'm not sure, but I'll, okay, I'll, I'm here. I'll defend Dale. I muster again in Dale. And then they continue moving armies. They get these units to um, West Herondor. And um, then I play Mithril Coat and Sting here because I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to Mordor. Good luck getting your last victory points. Um, and then they play on, on they went. So, okay. Next round, I finally draw some Ents. Okay, probably not too relevant. I'm happy to see Shield Wall. And um, they get some good cards here. Uh, half Orcs and Goblin Men and Nazgul Strike. Black Captain Commands is not playable, but they do have Nazgul Strike and Nazgul Search. And so um, they allocate one eye, they get three Palantirs, and then I get this beautiful roll. So this is this is a great roll. I can get into Mordor and um, yeah, it's just a good, a good situation. So I start by moving because I'm like, I'm going to Mordor. That's great. And I think, I think I'm thinking here, oh, maybe I should move so that they don't, um, they can't play Nazgul Search or Nazgul Strike because they don't have any character dice and they won't be able to move around their Nazgul. Um, that was an interesting idea. Um, you know, the Fellowship's going to be pretty slow going up Mordor with four dice and no rings. Um, so I do have good healing. I have Athalos and Bilbo Song. Um, so, like, I'm not too worried about corruption. And I have Mithril Hood and Sting. And I have uh, Smeagol Helps Nice Master and um, File in there. So I'm not too worried about corruption, but this was... If I wasn't going to move again right away, and you see, I don't, I don't move again a, a, the second time. Um, I probably should have just waited. So um, I got a little impatient. It's also getting late, and we've been playing for a long time. But um, I should have waited. So my opponent moves, merges an army into Old Forest Road, and now I'm like, what is going on? Are they going to attack into Dale with this army? And um, so I muster into Dale again, because like, great, try and throw your army against Dale. That sounds good. And um, then they play half-orcs and goblin men. And now you can see if they're going to attack into Dale, uh, I have some options. So I, I start passing now. And um, 
Then they play Nazgul Search to move Nazgul around. And now they have a full contingent of Nazgul on Old Forest Road. And then they attack me in Dale. And so, like, is there a plan to go to Erebor? I don't know. Like, there's a pretty powerful army there. Gimli's there. I could easily have Dane. I mean, I don't have Dane, but I could have Dane. Um, what is your plan? I have 10 hit points to your nine hit points. I do only have two leadership, um, but I'm in a city. So I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, I play shield wall because I don't know, they could get some hits. So better only lose one. Um, and then they, uh, get no hits and I get two hits. So then they press and I'm like, great, I can take out Dol Golder. Like this is, this is awesome. And if I had not moved at the start of this round, I would have enough dice, even with only four actions, I would have had enough dice to take Dol Golder this round. I did not anticipate this sort of attack into Dale, but I could have. It, it's not, it's not like so crazy that I could have um, anticipate that it seems like they were coming that direction. So yeah, that was, that was a shame. Um, now I move armies and I threaten Dol Golder and I get the regular into Erebor. Gimli's there. Hope, you know, at some point maybe I'll have Dane. And then they decide to play Nazgul strike to move Nazgul around. Um, which I'm like, great, now I can take Dol Golder without any elites. And they, and I knew, by the way, that they had, um, they had no, um, they had already played Orcs Multiplying again, and they already played Pits of Mordor. So there's no way for them to, re and they played Ulag High, and they played Wargs, and they played Hiltral. So there's literally no way to reinforce Dol Golder other than mustering. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's the right choice to not muster there because three hit points is not going to be enough against this army, but all right. So I go ahead and I could have gotten into Mordor here, but I'm like, I'm going to win militarily. This is amazing. Go Mary. Um, sorry, I moved the fellowship when I could have just won the game this round instead. All right. So my opponent attacks Dol Amroth. I have four leadership, a companion against uh this is seven hit points against 11 hit points and um i have brave stand i have fateful strike so we'll see what happens so they play a character card i go ahead and play brave stand here because i'm like they could be buffing their role and they do so um they uh get two hits on this which is obviously uh maybe not obviously but i think that's a little above expectation on four dice um and I get three hits. So that's good. That is what we'd expect. Um, so I take two and then they press and then um, they play character card. And here I go ahead and play Fateful Strike because why not? And um, they play Cruel as Death and they get four hits. Four hits. I can't believe it. Four hits. So that's sad. And... Um, I get two hits, which is, you know, ugh. so um, that's horrible. I'm down to one hit point in Dol Amroth like this. B Boromir, you should have been able to make it, but um, they press. And um, at this point, I have no quarter. So my hope is my plan is hope that they don't roll sixes. And then if they press again with the uh, elephant, then on the next round of combat, like I can't take them out this round because they have too many hit points, but I can hope that they don't roll sixes. And then next round of combat, um, I will take them out with no quarter. That's, that's my plan. Hope for no sixes now. So they press and they don't get any sixes. So great. And I get two sixes. And so now they don't press. They just lose their elite. They have two regulars and that's it. I'm like, great. Boromir, you're going to live. Hopefully we'll see what happens. It's exciting, right? This is, this is, this is an exciting game. Uh, I told you it was an epic game. <laughs> Lots of swings. All right. So, uh, we draw some cards. Uh, I draw daring defiance. Okay. Uh, daylight fine. Not probably too relevant. And, um, 
they draw deadly strife and um they get three attacks and i get enough attacks so i'm going to be able to take out dolgolder i know that there's no way they can reinforce it i see that this these armies in westerondor cannot get to dol amroth so it's just these two regulars these two regulars have to take out boromir and this regular that's the only way that they can win i think right like they can't they can't take Edoras and the Shire. Um, and there's no way that I can retake Pelargir or Dale. Um, I didn't draw into um, Book, and therefore I can't even attack with Gimli out of this. So, and I don't have any rings. So my thinking is draw a character card first. Um, see what I get. I got Brave Stand. Okay, cool. That could be useful. Um, maybe they're going to go after Erebor, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then they muster a unit. Who cares? And then I attacked Old Golder and I press once and then it falls. So way to go. Way to go, Mary. I am now at four victory points again on turn 16. And Boromir has to hold in Dol Amroth and they don't know, but I have, I have, um, no quarter, right? I've been saving no quarter for this moment. This is what I anticipated before. Right. So at the, like at the best, they're going to like, they'll do one to me, but I'll do two to them. And then Dol Amroth will be empty and, uh, but they won't be able to move in. They won't have enough movement to be able to take it. And they've already played Corsairs. So there's no Corsairs. Um, Okay, so they attack into Dol Amroth. They play a character card. And so I think it doesn't really matter what it is. And anything, I still want to play no quarter because then I only need one five. If I get a single five, then I hold it. So um, they top decked um, Dread and Despair, right? They had no, they had no cards in hand. Um, and they top decked Dread and Despair, um, I could have maybe played Brave Stand and they would have only rolled one, but I think I think it's better, like it's okay with me if we trade, if if we both get eliminated. So whatever. I'm still happy with no quarter. They still have to roll a six. Um and they roll a six. So now this is the moment. Boromir, no quarter. Uh I only have uh I only have one die, so I roll a one, I miss. And then a miss again. <laughs> so Boromir could not do it. Uh, Boromir falls. Dol Amroth falls. My opponent gets the 10 victory points. Uh, I'm at four victory points, but Shadow wins. So, you know, that was just an awesome game. Um, I went military from the very beginning. Um, they made... They, I would say my opponent made a few mistakes um, with, with particularly around the Witch King surviving um, or could have survived. And and I made some mistakes. Like last round, I did not need to move the Fellowship first action. Like that just, I should have passed. I should have just passed, 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 wait to see what happens. And then I could have taken Dol Golder last round instead of this round. So, you know, I think a few of the key combats went my opponent's way, particularly that bear Dur combat was just, I think, really good for them. Um, and I think Dual Amroth definitely went a bit in their favor. I don't, I don't know exactly how much, but um, I wonder what other um, character cards they could have had. So Cruel as Death, um, I would have, that I would have been fine to trade. That one would have been unplayable, Cruel Weather. They, so there were two Dreads and Despairs. So they had a 25% uh, chance of getting Dread and Despair. Um, Worn with Sorrow and Toil or the Words of Power also would have been good because I would have only rolled one die. So there were quite a few useful character cards they could have drawn. Um, anyway, that was the game. Let's look at the statistics. Um, so I think that, I think that these are reversed. I don't know. I don't. I actually have no idea if these are reversed or not. We we both rolled so many dice. Like this is <laughs> this is so many dice. Um 
Yeah. I was pretty low on um, Wills at the beginning of the game, but, you know, over a long game, it balances out pretty well. If this was me, that's obviously good. These fives are good. Anyway, that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Have a good day.